Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, as you may know, I've been involved a little bit in the Triple Five design contest that uh, Chris Gamble and Jerry Ellsworth put together because I'm judging the Australian uh, aspect. There's an Australian prize which I'm giving and I'm going to be judging that, so I couldn't really enter the contest. I'm too close to it. So um, I tweeted some time back that I was actually going to do my own Triple Five um, timer circuit just for fun. You know, enter it and make a good blog anyway, I thought. So yeah, I'd go ahead with it. And I was playing around with the damn thing and it, it was just playing up on me. I found this weird quirk and I, it took me ages to track the damn thing down. And I've finally done it and let me show you what I found. It's really interesting. As you may know, the Triple Five timer was designed by a guy called Hans Kemenzin, and he's famous for it as well as other stuff as well. And he's actually judging the Triple Five design contest, which is totally cool. But he's always publicly said that the that the number Triple Five 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 Five, not this triple nickel rubbish, has um, was just an arbitrarily assigned number. But if you look at the internal circuit, and I just so happen to have it here on my t-shirt, there are famously five resistors in there. In the standard uh, version, it isn't the same in the CMOS version, but anyway, there's uh, 5K, 5K, and 5K. And it's publicly claimed it's not, you know, it's just a ram randomly assigned number, but everyone in the business knows that's complete bullshit. Now, um, there's also been, I heard a rumor like decades ago that he added something else in the chip as well as a little mark for the triple five, but nobody's ever found it. And you know, he's denied that as well, but I, I'm not sure, I'm not gonna claim it, but possibly I might have found something and he needs to explain it. Let's, let's have a look at it. Now, here's the circuit I built up on breadboard. It actually took me some time to actually uh, do this. I'll show you up close in a minute, but um, uh, here's the Dave CAD drawing of what I've actually got here on the breadboard. And I'll show you up close. Um, but it's you'll recognize it. It's a standard as stable triple five timer circuit. Um, you know, pins uh, eight and four up there, one to ground, and it's just a standard configuration. But I've added in an adjustable uh, pot up here so I can adjust the frequency. And I've tweaked this value with a couple of parallel series and parallel resistors in there just to tweak it to get to the exact frequency which you'll find out actually matters and one of the key things is I haven't got a capacitor going to ground on pin 5 uh, now that is a recommended configuration they recommend like a 10 nanofarad capacitor to on pin 5 to ground but my circuit that I was playing around with didn't have that and I realized that you that is the key one of the keys to this there are two keys to this which will uh, find out and I've just added a low pass filter to the output so that I can see some stuff as you'll see later But let's check out the circuit on the board and here it is wired up exactly as per that Dave CAD uh, Drawing here's my adjustable pot up here, which I'll use to adjust the oscillator Frequency that's my low pass filter there, and I've got a bypass cap on there But as you will see that uh, won't have any impact on this now Let's uh, take a look at the problem and see what we get uh, as you can see, I'm probing the output here. This is the pin 3 output, and I'm also probing the output of the low-pass filter here. And you'll note that there's no bypass cap on pin 5, and as you'll see later, that's pretty key to this uh, whole thing, or it's one of the keys. There's a couple of keys to this, but uh, let's see. And I'm measuring the output now, and as you can see, it's um, about 55.2 kilohertz, okay? Just over 55 kilohertz. Now, I'll see if I can get... All this in the shot here. Sorry, it's hard um, to get the frequency and the pot and everything. But let's see if we can recreate the problem I've been having. I've got my adjustment pot here, and let's wind up the wick on this thing. Let's is that in shot? Yep. Okay. Let's wind up the wick on this and see. Watch the frequency over here. Once it gets to 55.5 hertz you'll see something rather remarkable. I've got some averaging turned on here just to stabilize it because the triple five is not uh, the most uh, stable beast. And actually it's starting to get a bit wobbly. Now, as you can see, it once it hits 55.5, bingo, look at that. 
it's jumping around. And if we go past that, if we go past it, okay, we're, we're out. So let's go back down to that. Oh, hey, there we go. There, what? There. Have we got it? Have we got it? I think we've got it. All right. And look, it's modulating. It's something. Look, it's, it's wobbling all over the place. That's because of the averaging. So if you turn the averaging off, okay, let's turn the averaging off and look at, look at this thing, okay? Look, look, there's modulation on there at 55.5 kilohertz, five, five, five. I, you know, what can you say? I don't know. We, I need to investigate this a bit more, but let's actually do this. What I've got is the low pass filter up here. Okay, so let's, um, we have to go uh, trigger off uh, channel two here. So let's trigger off our second channel up the top. And look at that. Look, look at what we've got. That, that filter, that low pass filter down in the circuit down here, is just taking out, effectively taking out the 55.5 kilohertz uh, carrier uh, frequency, as you know, to want of a better term. And it's um, it, look at the output here, and that's on frequency two. Look, it is 55. I'm not kidding you. It is 55.5 hertz modulation. We can turn the average in up a bit more here let's oh sorry that 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 is no averaging let's turn the averaging on okay and you'll see that the other whoop, sorry you'll see that the other waveform disappears of course because we're now averaging and check it out look the frequency of that channel the modulation is 55.5 hertz at um at 55.5 damn kilohertz in this circuit what the hell is going on it's nuts! Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I've got a 10 nanofarad um, cap and I'm going to put that as per the application nodes on uh, pin 5 of the chip and see our module, we're, we're, we're still modulating here. Look, it's still, I haven't I haven't adjusted that pot any further so let's, let's uh, whack this on here at, um, where is it? Oh. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to have to go pin five. And check it out. Look. There is no more modulation. It's, it's nuts. What's going on? And... Right? If you... Well, that's per the application note. It's probably not... You know, because that's how you're supposed to use... The device, and that's why probably no one has ever found this thing. But look, if you if you physically remove that cap, look, the the modulation just it it comes back. It's nuts. Now, if you're thinking like I was, that maybe it's got something to do with my external five volt external bench supply I'm using here. But um, and maybe it's some weird uh, decoupling effect because the frequency of the triple five. Um, can actually be well you know it can be sensitive to your power very sensitive to your power supply rails but let me so i thought like it was the decoupling cap but let's physically remove the decoupling cap off here well and it still does it i mean there's the extra ring in right because there's no decoupling on there but the modulation still remains it's still doing exactly the same thing and if we uh, and if we change that, if we go trigger off uh, channel 2 again, and if we boop, 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 we've still got that 55.5 hertz modulation. It's crazy, even with the decoupling cap gone. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. That wasn't good enough for me either. So what I've done is I've... Um, uh, pairing it now from a battery pack, I've completely disabled these uh, inputs in my external uh, supply, and um, look, it, it, it's exactly the same, exactly the same modulation, and I, it's just nuts. If we go in and we trigger off channel two again, and we sweep it down, and there it is. It is still 55.5 hertz modulation when you hit 
uh, 0.5 kilohertz. And of course with that uh, battery circuit, because the battery will actually change the, um, the battery would actually physically change the frequency uh, because it is, it's not spot on 5, it's about 5.3. I've got a couple of alkalines and some rechargeables in there. It's about 5.3, so I had to retweak the pot. But that's all I had to do to get it to do exactly the same thing as what we had before. Now I want to know how the bloody hell it's doing that when there's just, you know, it, it's the, um, there's, it's just a standard as, as stable triple five timer circuit with, uh, without the control, um, modulation capacitor on, uh, pin five to actually, um, uh, stop any, uh, modulation or oscillation or stuff like that. And you still get the 55 hertz output. You've whacked that cap on and it just vanishes. That's per the application note. But yeah, sure, I was trying to use the thing outside of its application note specification, but I found something really, really interesting here. And in case you're wondering what uh, chip I'm actually using, it is a national semiconductor uh, chip. But sorry, it's hard to it's hard to really get chips. You've got to get the light right. But I've actually tried um, a TI brand chip, and it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same thing. So it's not just uh, the National uh, Instruments device. It it seems to be, well, it's at least across two brands. So if other people can try out other brands and see if it does exactly the same thing, we'll see if this is across the board on all triple fives. So there you go. That's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. I came across this when I was prototyping my little VeraBoard uh, circuit. I was getting all sorts of little funny things because I was trying to do something weird with it for the contest, so I wasn't using the, um, I didn't have the standard bypass cap uh, to ground on the control pin. And I was getting, and it took me ages to narrow this damn thing down to 55.5 kilohertz, and then the damn thing modulates. And I've tried two different devices from different manufacturers that does exactly the same thing. It only happens at 55.5 kilohertz, and it only happens if you have the uh, control pin uh, not connected at all and you get the 55.5 hertz modulation. It can't be a coincidence, surely. This is triple five timer, it's famously got the 555 resistor in it at 55 kilohertz, 55.5 hertz modulation. It can't be, so I've got to uh, get in contact with Hans and find out uh, what's going on here because, well, I don't know, but something smells fishy. So I don't have the CMOS triple five to try out um, or other brands. These are the two I had in stock here. So build it up and let us know, take a video and let us know if you can actually get, confirm this, the same thing is happening. Catch you later.